Hello and welcome to newsclick.in. 50 years ago, an epoch-making revolution took place in Latin America, the Cuban Revolution. It charted a new course and represents till today one of the great beacons of hope in this world that is increasingly saddled with war and, and devastation of a huge, huge kind. I'm, I'm today with Shomik Bandupadhyay, who's a leading film and, um, um, and theater scholar from Calcutta. And I'm going to be talking to him about the impact that the Cuban Revolution had on the field of culture. Shamikda, what did the revolutionary government do immediately after the revolution in Cuba in the, in the sphere of culture? I think the two uh, major things that they did, A, was a massive literacy campaign. Because any new revolutionary situation needs education and the most widespread education possible. That became a major program. And the second thing that it did was to set up the Cuban Film Institute. And at a point of time when dictatorship was ruling most of the Latin American countries and a whole different culture of radical protest against dictatorship and autocracy was growing in all these Latin American states and they could not make films in their own country. So the Cuban Film Institute was not for Cuban cinema per se, but for the entire Latin American expression in terms of cinema. That was a great historic event. And another little thing which was uh, something that we cherished at that moment, I remember, uh, this was in 1961, almost immediately after the revolution, that in India, we were celebrating the centenary of Tagore. And the prima ballerina of Cuban ballet, the legendary Alicia Alonso, was sent down to Calcutta to perform on a makeshift stage in the name of Tagore. No other country would do it, send their greatest ballerina, the treasure of ballet history, down to Calcutta to pay tribute to Tagore. And she came, I remember, as Fidel's personal representative and carried and read Fidel's message on that occasion. Something was something stupendous. So, so the, the identification of revolution with culture uh, came so alive at that moment. And Cuba didn't really have a domestic uh, indigenous film industry before the revolution, did it? It didn't really. And uh, it, 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 it really started out of it. Before that, there had been a documentary filmmaking. And uh, quite a few of the Latin American filmmakers, including the Cuban filmmakers, had gone down to Italy and directly worked with the Italian neorealist filmmakers. In fact, uh, Otello Martelli, who photographed most of De Sica's films, uh, worked also for Thomas Allaire when he made his first documentary in Cuba. So the connection with the Italian neorealistic tradition was a great uh, factor in the making and the building of the Cuban film culture. And would you say that Thomas Allaire is, is probably the best representative of the Cuban uh, sort of uh, experiment with cinema? Alia started with the documentary Songs of Revolution, which uh, charted the background of the revolution, the provocations, the points of takeoff, and the revolution itself, and post-revolution, all of that brought together. But even as he was documenting the changing reality and the revolutionary presence, he hit upon a whole different way of approaching this extremely complex reality, where in Cuba, the African culture, the Spanish culture, so Europe and Africa, the two continents, were meeting in a third continent, America. So all those connections and the rich texture of that culture and the different kind of criticality, the different kind of mindset that grows out of that, that doesn't accept anything uh, at face value, but would like to examine it in terms of different reference points. All that becomes part of the 
part of the making of his cinema. His cinema becomes a different kind of thing. It was not any longer documenting, but documenting, critiquing, questioning, and bringing the individual at the center of it as a questioning, probing individual. That was so exceptional. A different revolutionary cinema was emerging, very different from the more uh, celebratory early cinema of the Soviet Union after the 1917 revolution. Because revolution had been differently contextualized in the late 50s and 1960s. History had changed, and that history was being incorporated into Alia's films. So he could make memories of underdevelopment, directly addressing that moment of revolutionary change and transformation, and then go back to something like The Last Supper, in which he goes back to old ballad almost, and recreates the history of slavery and the first revolts against slavery. I also find some of his not so celebrated films actually quite exciting. Films like, for instance, Up to a Point. Which was actually a film being done by Sara Gomez, which Alia finished because right. she died in the middle of it. Right. Um, or, for instance, a later film like Juan Tanamera. Yes. Because I find that these films are actually very sharp critiques of, um, of attitudes as well as the bureaucracy within Cuba, isn't it? In that sense, also, these films are actually quite different. From hmm. the kind of films that normally, in popular imagination, um, are associated with socialist societies. Hmm. Uh, even, say, in a film like The Death of a Bureaucrat, exactly. Exactly. which is a takeoff at one uh, level from the surrealist cinema, the American silent cinema, okay. so, here was a man who was prepared to ransack the entire history of cinema to serve the spirit of the revolution, the inherent criticality of the Cuban revolution, which was a very special kind of revolution. And maybe that is the reason that why it has uh, survived. The, the culture, the new culture, sustaining it and supporting it all through against all these odds.